Hello TV Nation and welcome. TV has a lot of powerful features. So in this video, I'm going to show you 10 hidden features that you need to know about. So let's dive in and let me show you. Okay, so let's get started with our first hidden feature. Now, did you know that if you right click on a module, a section or a row, you can actually get extra options. So let's give it a try. So if I come here to this blurb in right click, you can see we can rename it, we can split test, save to library, disable and so on. And the same applies if I come to the section, we also have options for the sections. In fact, we can collapse this and do all sorts of stuff. And here on the row as well, if I right click, we also get options for the rows. So one quick feature that I like is being able to lock some modules. So as an admin, it's good that you can actually lock some modules. This prevents your editors from messing around with those modules. So I'm going to come over here, click right, and I'm going to lock it. And then you can see the color has changed. Now let's say your page is really, really long and you have so many design elements on it. And we are going to simulate that by just duplicating these sections, right? So you can see that um, the more we have these sections, every time you come to this page, you have to scroll. So you can actually collapse and rename. So let's say this section is our hero section. If you right click on here, you can actually collapse this. And then I can actually rename this section. So I'm going to right click and right here at the top, I can see this option to rename. So I'm going to call this hero section and save. So now as you go through your site, it's easier now to see which section you, you're going to work with. And by collapsing this, it means that you don't have a lot of items on your page as you're scrolling through it. Okay, so I think that's a handy feature. Okay, so let's move on to number two, disable top tier drop down menu links. So let me show you how this works. So I'm going to come over here to my page and I'm going to view my website. So I'm going to click visit site and I'm going to do this in a new tab. Right. So here you can see we have a drop down. We have themes, plugins and download. Now this about is actually clickable. If I click on this, it actually goes to a page. Now there are cases where you may not want this. You would want just this about to be an indicator that these items below and not make it clickable. So let me show you how to do that. So to do that, we need to go into our theme options. So I'm going to come over here to DV theme options. I'm going to come here to navigation, click on general settings. And now you can see disable top tier drop down menu links is right here. So if I, if I click enabled and save changes, so if I come over here and try and click this, you can see now it's unclickable, okay? And that's all just by making this change here in the Divi options. Okay, let's move on to number three, alternative scroll to anchor method. If you've ever tried to link directly to a CSS ID using an anchor link from an external page, you may have noticed that the final resting location of the page isn't quite correct. It's normally off or sometimes lower and it's not really on the actual place where it needs to be on the screen. By activating the alternative scroll to anchor method corrects this problem. So this feature is on the same page as the disabled top tier drop down menu links. Okay, so let's move on to number four, hide logo on mobile. So here, the first thing that comes to mind if you want to hide your logo on mobile is to use CSS. But there's a very easy way to do this in our theme customizer. So let's go into the theme customizer and let me show you how to do that. So if you come here to theme customizer, click on mobile styles and then click on mobile menu. Now we have the option to hide the logo image. So if I toggle this, you can see it's going on and off. So that's how easy it is to hide your logo on mobile. Let's move on to number five, primary and secondary menu drop down animations. Okay, so let's save and publish and then let's go back to our main menu. So I'm just gonna go back. Right, so while we're here, we need to go into header navigation and primary menu bar. If you come all the way down here, you can see that we have a drop down menu animation. So currently it's set to fade, but we have more options when we click this drop down. So we can flip and let's take a look at how that looks. So you can see now the animation has changed. 
It's now flipping. We can try slide. And you can see as soon as I put my mouse over here, it's sliding. Okay, I'm going to save and publish for now. And let's go back to the secondary menu bar. And these same settings also apply. So I'm going to click on the secondary menu bar. And we can see here at the bottom, we have the same options. Expand, slide, and flip. So if you have a secondary menu bar, you can actually come over here and make those adjustments. Okay, so we are on our sixth hidden feature, and this is edit or disable footer credits. So to access that, you need to come over here to Divi, theme customizer, and then you need to select footer and bottom bar. So let me scroll down here so you can see what's happening on the bottom bar. So at the moment, it says de designed by Elegant Themes, powered by WordPress. So let's go ahead and customize that. So I'm just gonna type here designed by Mac. And we can see now that the text that we had before has now been replaced with mine. And now it's designed by Mac. Now, if we don't want to do that, if we don't want to do that, we can actually completely disable this by clicking this button here. So if I click here, you can see everything is gone. All the footer credits is, has disappeared. Okay. So that's how you can either edit the footer credits or disable the footer credits altogether. So once you're done with making your changes, go ahead and click on save and publish. Moving along, number seven. So number seven is all about changing Divi's default color palette. So to get to our color palette, we need to come over here to DV, click on theme options, and then we can scroll down here to color palette. So this is the color palette that is used throughout the whole website. Now, if you're like me, you are probably copying and pasting hexadecimal codes for your colors as you're designing your website. You can completely cut down your time by actually adjusting these colors that will be used throughout your website. So if I click on this black here, we can actually change this to your main color. So let's say, for example, I need this to be uh, gray. So I'm just going to add my colors here. And uh, let's say I need to change this white to, to say F2, F2, F2. So as you can see, I'm actually changing this color palette. So this works handy because these are the colors that will be presented to you as you're designing your website. So I would say go ahead and if you know your color palette, come over here, adjust these colors and stop using the default colors that come with Divi. Unless, of course, you want to use these colors which come with Divi by default. So once all your colors are updated, you can come over here and save changes. Okay, so let's move on to number eight, DV Builder Settings. So to access our Builder Settings, we need to come to a page. So I'm going to click on All Pages, and I'm going to select a page. Now, the page that you need to use this DV Builder on has to have DV Builder activated. So if we come over here to, for example, the About page, because I know for a fact that I'm not using the DV Builder on this page, we don't have access to it unless this is enabled. So I'm going to choose a page now which has the... Um, DV Builder. So I'm going to click on Edit. Right, so, so to access the DV Builder settings, you need to come over here to this hamburger icon. So if you click on it, now you can make changes to this specific page. Now this is a time saver because if you're going to use CSS, you have to be targeting uh, specific items on this page using CSS. But by coming over here to this DV Builder settings, you are only making changes to this particular page. So you can adjust the color palette here. We can adjust the gutter width and we can do all these changes, section background and so on. So this is ideal for landing pages or if you just want to customize your page. Now, the other feature that is very, very important as well that comes into this DV Builder settings is to enable split testing. Now, this is... So if I click on, we can see here that uh, we are pretty much ready to do all our tracking. And this feature allows you to enable the DV lead split testing system for your page. This is a powerful tool, simply too valuable to ignore. Okay, so let's move on to number nine. Choose what meta info to display on your blog posts. And this can be done simply by going into the DV theme options and clicking the layout. So let's do that. So let's go to our theme options. I'm going to come over here to Divi, click on theme options. We need the layout tab. 
and we are on this single post. So this is where we can adjust all our meta information. So if we take a look here, we can see that our author, date, categories, and comments is all activated. And let me show you what it looks like on an actual post. So I'm gonna come over here to this tab and we can see here, this is the author, date, category, and comments. Right now it's showing zero comments because there's no comments on this post. So we can actually disable this to your liking. So if I come over here to theme options again, and uh, disable the author and the category and click on save changes. If we refresh this page, we can see now all we have is the date and the comments. So that's how you can easily come in here and change your meta information. So the change that we've done here is only on the single post layout. But if you wanna do it for the blog page and the post excerpts, what we need to do is to come over here to general settings and make the change here. Okay, so once you're happy with that, go ahead and click on save changes. Okay, finally, we are on number 10, and this is all about the code module. So to access the code module, you just have to go to a page. So for now, I'm just going to go to this page one, and let's add a module. So I'm going to click insert modules and it is right here. Now the code module gives you the ability to add HTML, import external CSS files like animate.css for any page that you need the animation. And if you've seen in previous tutorials, we've actually used the CodePen code generator to add some CSS and different design elements to our page. There's a lot that you can do with this code module. So go ahead, give it a try. I've also added a link to the article, which has links to previous tutorials that we've done using this code module. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we produce a video. We are going to be producing more videos similar to what you're seeing today. So until next time, thanks for watching and see you soon.